Hello, this is Mike from the Forge's Path. Today I want to talk about the idea of flow and stagnation in herbal medicine. So in traditional forms of healthcare, there's often these continuums. And we have things like yin and yang, and then we also have uh, hot and warm, hot and cool, um, moist and dry, tense and lax, movement and stillness. Um, and just like we have winter and summer, there's this duality that we have. And uh, uh, an essential part of being healthy is to have a healthy flow in our bodies. And herbal medicine can support a healthy flow. This is something that we do, but we don't always even think about it so much. So um, I wanted to uh, share this idea of the flow uh, and um, talk about how it's expressed in herbal medicine. So you think about life is movement and of course the opposite of life is death and that to me is the ultimate stillness. And this movement of life is what I refer to as the flow and I, when I write it I often use a capital F just to make it stand out. And ideally the flow is going to be uh, smooth and rhythmic and pulsating and cyclic. And by that um, I think about in our breath we have this rhythm of breathing and it's steady and it's predictable. And we might change our respiratory rate depending on uh, whether we're hiking uphill or doing hard work, shoveling snow, or just, you know, sitting in a chair and relaxing, but it increases gradually and decreases gradually. And if we're in the steady state, why our breath remains in a steady state. In the same way with our circulation and our heart rate. Why our heart rate will change, but ideally, it's going to be this cyclic rhythmic pumping of our heart which keeps our blood flowing and so the flow of the blood is is you know it's obviously essential to life just like the flow of the breath is uh, with food with our digestive system you know ideally we we eat on a regular basis and then food is moving through our system on a regular basis and we have ball movements uh, there's a flow to that that uh, again if it's healthy it's a it, there's a, a smoothness and a rhythm to it uh, our lymph is part of our immune system it's part of our uh, eliminatory system and so you want the lymph to be flowing um, and when we get sick and we feel under our chin here and we feel these swollen lymph glands and then there's stagnation our lymph isn't flowing and so we can use herbs to help the lymph flow think about information coming in through our senses we have the flow of thoughts in our mind and then the flow of reproductive fluids and then there's this overall flow of the life force in our body whether you call it chi or prana or uh, the vital essence and a lot of different cultures have different names but um, uh, we want this energy to be moving smoothly through our body and so a lot of the herbal actions that we talk about in, herb, in, in western herbal medicine are actually referring to the flow even though we don't always say that word flow so um, uh, here, like Sialagog is not as uh, commonly known, but there's herbs that promote the flow of our salivary glands. So if you take a Sialagog, your mouth will get really wet and full of saliva. A laxative, obviously, is the, you know, the flow of a bowel movement. A diuretic could be the flow, you, may, you, you pee more. A decongestant is you uh, become less congested in your sinuses. And then the flow of air can get into your lungs. A vasodilator, it opens up the blood vessels, so it allows the flow of blood more smoothly. Uh, digestive bitters is something that a lot of people take. It stimulates the release of bile from the gallbladder. And so um, 
you get this flow of digestive juices and we and, and before you eat uh, and you see the word cholagog, um, and so uh, gog is an old word, old English word that means the flow. And so this is the flow of bile, which is like the call from the from the gallbladder. Lymph tonics, <clears throat> again, especially when we're sick, or why we we want to take some lymph tonics to help our immune system galactagog you see the word gog there again which means flow galactagog is a, is an herb that helps the flow of breast milk and a lot of nursing moms will use galactagog herbs uh, even in mainstream conventional pharmaceutical medicine they use a bronchodilator for asthma uh, when you do the inhaler and that just allows the flow of breath uh, into your lungs. And when you think about it, not just herbal medicine, but there's uh, many forms of uh, what I would call complementary health care support this flow. So if you do massage, you're relaxing tense muscles, which inhibit the flow of blood, but also the flow of the life force energy. Meditation, uh, there's this uh, rhythmic breathing that's a part of, of uh, many meditative uh, traditions. Yoga, uh, there's the, the flow, the vinyasa uh, in yoga. Acupuncture is about um, regulating or balancing the flow of energy in the body. So <clears throat> a lot of these... Uh, Again, these alternative or complementary healthcare practices are working with that idea. Um, and then uh, the way I teach energetic herbal medicine is I talk about hot, cold, wet, dry, intense, lax. And these are the three continuums which you see referred to in Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, in Greek medicine and Unani medicine, and pretty much around the world. Uh, there's different cultural ways to express it, different vocabulary, but they're basically talking about uh, the hot, cold, wet, dry, intense, lax properties in the body. When we can balance these three continuums, these energetics, then we're balancing the flow, meaning it's a healthy flow. So the opposite of flow is congestion. And imagine if your sinuses are congested, your lymph is congested, your bowel movements are congested, or if there is a blockage in your blood flow, why? Or, you know, if somehow there's a blockage in your, in, your, in your windpipe and you can't breathe. And so um, anytime you have this blockage of the flow, why? Um, it's a, a form of congestion or blockage, but in herbal medicine, it's often referred to as stagnation. And Chinese medicine is uh, so, um, they place so much emphasis on the flow that they call stagnation the mother of all diseases. And that they see that as one of the worst things that can happen is to be stagnant. And when you want to be moving or you should be moving, but you can't for various reasons. Uh, and they, Chinese medicine even breaks down the stagnation into five different categories of stagnation, which is a whole um, wonderfully fascinating and helpful class, but it's rather involved. So we won't get into it here. But the purpose of this video is I just want you to be aware of what FLOW, the idea, and how important it is in our health. And whether you are thinking about your own health or you're an herbalist who thinks is helping someone else regain balance, is there some part, is there an organ or a tissue or a system in their body that seems to be blocked and isn't quite moving or flowing uh, as best as it could or as it should? And then one of the, uh, the, the approaches in herbal medicine is to give herbs to assist that movement in a healthy way. Now, sure, there's ways where we might have excess flow, like diarrhea would be one example, um, even hyperventilation, you know, where you're just breathing too fast, uh, that might be excess. But in my experience, for the most part, we want to uh, increase the flow 
but for sure we always want to balance it and usually we balance it by increasing the flow there are times when you need to reduce it uh, but uh, again that's um, something that you learn uh, in in herb class uh, how to make that assessment all right well thanks for listening and i hope you found this helpful and i hope to see you uh, on another video thanks